There's so much life passing through these waters, and as scientists are finding out, even more to learn from what is left behind. Got it? OK. That jug of seawater contains environmental DNA, or eDNA, scooped up behind a diving whale. And essentially, it's like CSI, um, pardon the pun, <laughs> uh, but CSI in the ocean. Through that collection of water, we can extract skin cells, fecal matter, and extract the DNA from that, never actually touching the animal, which, is, uh, which we're really excited about. The sample is filtered on the boat and later sent for genetic testing. It's the first time eDNA has been used to study whales here. We know that we can sex individual whales. We can look at things like uh, the amount of genetic diversity, how populations of whales are related. Uh, we can also pot potentially look at paternity. Scientists know some of BC's killer whales are already under stress from lack of food, ship traffic and climate change. Traditional research would also call for a sample of tissue from the whale. This approach avoids that. My greatest hope is that we cease all need to do biopsy work. I would love to see that we totally switch all of our methods of collecting DNA to be in these non-invasive eDNA samples. Uh, which will help the populations reduce disturbance. This kind of whale research is still new, and part of the work is figuring out how to improve the science, standardising how much seawater to scoop and when to make it more precise. Knowing that what we're doing can eventually lead to better conservation efforts for the species, and uh, whatever we can do to give back to them brings myself a lot of uh, gratification and uh, really makes me love the work that we're doing, um, knowing that it can be used to make positive impact for these animals. Work that is bridging the knowledge gap without getting too close. Georgie Smythe, CBC News, Hornby Island.